Okay, I wanted to show you a circular motion lab that I do with my AP Physics Mechanics C students, but this is certainly something that could be done in a regular physics class and adjusted. Uh, I have a version of this lab where we're using uh, the angular speed squared times the radius formula for centripetal acceleration, and then also one if you're using V squared over R. So uh, uh, you can definitely adapt it to anything. And so this is a model of an amusement park ride known as the rotor. Uh, the rotor is really just a cylinder, and I happen to have these PASCO rotational uh, apparati that I use for it. And so it just spins kind of like the washing machine during the spin cycle, and people are inside it, they stand against the wall, and then they drop the floor, and people stick to the wall. And so I want my students to be able to understand why that's happening, be able to explain it to somebody else, and also extend it to other things they've seen. Uh, so if you don't have one of these, you don't need one. I have a version that works very well and in a lot of ways better uh, using just a common Lazy Susan. A little hard to see because we painted it black for some strange reason. But this is just a Lazy Susan. And I put some push pins around it and made a rotor cylinder out of stiff cardboard. I believe this might be matting from a, a picture frame shop, but any poster board, this is just something I got at an art store, uh, just poster board. And so the idea is to have my students predict what is the minimum angular speed so that the rider, which is Elmo in this case, stays stuck to the wall. And so the lab leads them through this step by step with some questions and I actually walk around and help them out and check their answers to the questions and they end up with a prediction that's uh, pretty accurate. Things they need to know about the system, well I ask them what they're going to need to know. They usually figure it out, a lot of them think they need the mass of Elmo and they do need it to answer some of the questions, but for as far as the prediction, they don't need that. Uh, they need the radius. I have them measure to the center of Elmo with the bigger Lazy Susan. That's probably not as key, but with this guy, uh, they subtract a little bit from the radius of the rotor to measure to the center of mass of Elmo, if you will. Um, and then they also need to know the coefficient of friction, and so my students just do a simple experiment. They put Elmo uh, in here and they tip it until he slides and they discover back in the Newton's Law unit that the tangent of the angle he slides at is the coefficient of static friction. And so with all that, they predict the uh, angular speed he's gonna slide. Now we need to test it out and so I have my computer set up to measure angular uh, speed. I told it that uh, it was going to be interrupted once per revolution by this flag and all I do is hold the photo gate here and it'll be interrupted measuring the period. You can have them do that however you want them to measure it. And then when I see Elmo slip I hold the photo gate up and I know the last point I got was about the speed that he slipped at. So I'll show you what that looks like. So I've hit Start on the data collection, the spin, get Elmo to stick, hold the photo gate there, and he slipped. And we got the data. It's got a couple of data points, but it's usually around 10 radians per second, and that's what that was. Uh, they have students have a little trouble getting Elmo to stick. Uh, to, with the Lazy Susan, I hold both sides and twist it. And then you want to throw him in so he's moving tangentially. Let's do another run here. You really don't want him sticking out over the top because then you might have a normal force that would also be helping to hold him up. And so I don't think that was the case there. And this time we got 9.3 radians, so it's pretty consistent. Uh, they get pretty good results. Uh, it's more of a uh, practicum, uh, 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 a task to have them predict and see how close they 
uh, get it at. You could do some things like put different mass objects that have the same friction, uh, different beanie babies, and you'll find they should all slide about the same uh, time. Uh, you could try different radius ones, but I think that's sort of overkill. I think this one is really just predicting that minimum speed, but maybe you'll find a, a variation that you like. Uh, this sounds pretty uh, complex for them, but on the very first day of circular motion, and I'm sure a lot of you guys do this too, uh, you show them that you can hold a book up with your hand in the vertical orientation by doing this. And this is really the same thing as a rotor. You could probably develop a way to get some numerical quantities and measurements from uh, the book demo, but I think this makes it a lot easier. And then if you look up the rotor online, you'll see their videos. Uh, I posted uh, my labs and some videos and other things about the rotor on pretty good physics on the circular motion chapter. So go and check that out if you're looking for something to do with circular motion that will engage your students and help reinforce uh, what they've already learned about it.